Hi there, uh, my name's Terry Dempsey. Um, I'm the owner of Urban Baits. I've um, come down to here, to the Chase Lakes in uh, Essex in East London for some winter carp fishing. Um, I've not been down here for a couple of years. Um, I have fished this lake on and off uh, in the winter for about the last 40 odd years. So I've been coming down here since I was about 12 years of age. Uh, we decided to come down here to, to do some bait application uh, videos and uh, to talk about bait application, the sort of stuff that I would do in the winter. Uh, this is a different lake to what I'm used to fishing. I'm used to fishing sort of low stock, big pits. Uh, this is, I suppose, about 12 acres, this lake, um, but there's a lot of carp in here. But that's what you want in January. It's uh, 17th of January, it's really cold, it's probably minus two uh, this morning when I got down here, a thick frost. Uh, we've had a good look around. We found some fish uh, not far from where I am under a bridge just down to our left. So I'm going to fish this swim. I'm going to try and do something a bit different to what people generally do in the winter. I'm going to put a bit of bait out. I'm not going to go mad. I'm going to put six bombs out um, and see what happens. Uh, I come down here about two years ago, the last time, two, maybe two, maybe three seasons back. and. Um, over the period of a night I put quite a lot of bait in um, and it seemed to work well so we'll try that and see how we get on. Over the next few months, we're going to be doing quite a few articles in carpology and also some videos. This trip here, we've come to a, an easier lake because obviously it's the middle of January and um, it, you know, it's a bit tough on the big gravel pits. But um, over the next couple of weeks, I'm starting to fish a, a new lake. Um, it's a 35 acre gravel pit. It's a, it's a reasonable stock. It isn't too low. It's a reasonable stock. I think there's about 100 odd fish in there, saying 35 acres, so what, three or four fish in an acre, which is quite a lot for me, really. A lot of the lakes that I've fished over the last sort of 10 years have been less than that. So I'm really looking forward to that, and there's some good fish in there as well. And what we're going to do, we're going to do like a campaign on there. And the thing is, over the last sort of, I don't know, 30, 40 years, most of my fishing has been campaign fishing. So I very rarely ever um, fish a lake like a day ticket like this, maybe in the winter, but most of my summer fishing and spring fishing has always been campaign fishing. And what I mean by that is that I'm sort of fishing one lake, I'm concentrating on one lake. Because a lot of these lakes are really hard and I'm after a certain amount of fish, and with the limited time of having a, my own, you know, having to work and having a family as well. Um, my campaign fishing is I really have to put a lot of effort in to the lake that I'm fishing. So what I mean by that is we're going to be doing a lot of preparation. Um, the guys at Carpology are going to come along and film a lot of this preparation that we're going to do. So we're going to be finding spots, baiting spots and trying our hardest to make the job a lot more simpler. So when I do arrive at the lake, I've got a good idea of where the fish are going to be feeding or where they have been feeding due to the bait that I've been putting in the lake. So I'm really looking forward to this uh, and I know the guys are um, at Carpology as well. They're looking forward to it and hopefully we can do a good bit of filming for this campaign fishing and hopefully put a good fish on the bank for the cameras.
So the bait I'm using today is the Nutcracker. Um, it's not the Freezer Nutcracker, it's not the Shelf Life, it's the Himalayan Salt Range. We brought the Himalayan Salt Range out because a lot of anglers were going to France and fishing lakes where they were not allowed to use uh, Shelf Life baits. So with the Himalayan Salt, what it is, it's we get the boilie, we dry it out and we dry it out in um, it, in, a, in a period of time and then we leave it in the salt and what it does, it, it does is it, the salt is taking the moisture out of the bait um, which is stopping it from turning, stopping it from going off. Um, we put a small amount of salt as well inside the bait to keep the moisture in the bait. Um, I first got the idea when I was in Europe and um, I met a bunch, a group of German anglers and they were curing their baits in salt and they were preserving the baits using salt, which is what people do a lot in Europe. Uh, they, they, you know, they're using salt to not just baits, obviously for food as well. So they're, they're preserving, it's, it's a natural preserve for, it, for most types of food. So once I started using it, I started having some good results and we decided to bring it out. I've used salt in my baits now for about 20 years. I've been putting salt in my baits, uh, my fish meal baits especially. So then I started to put it into the nut baits as well and we started to get in some good results. So what it stops is, it stops a lot of lakes nowadays that you're not allowed to use uh, shelf lifes. And you know, if you take a freezer bait there, there's a good chance that the bait's gonna turn around. So it stops the baits turning. Um, it keeps them fresh. And so this is what we're using today here. What I'm trying to do is um, I'm, I'm trying to build like a, an area out there like I've put quite a few spoms out of a lot of small stuff so I've crumbed a lot of baits down I've mixed in some stick mix and I've mixed some two mil pellets there's quite a few birds diving out here so I'm hoping that there's quite a few lots of bits and pieces down there that can hold hold some bait in the swim because the boilies are disappearing really quick so I'm hoping that when the carp do come in there's still plenty of bait down there even though the birds are diving on me like crazy at the moment and with a bit of luck we'll have a fish one of the reasons that I've put uh, quite a, f a few baits out in this trip, even in this, these cold temperatures, is I was down here about two years ago and um, I fished on the other side from where I am now and um, I introduced quite a lot of bait on one rod and I had two rods with hardly any bait around it and I had one rod with quite a lot of bait around it, like seven or eight spoms and that was the rod that kept going and throughout the night I was catching fish and what I realised is maybe the noise of the spawn was bringing the fish in because every sort of few hours I was getting another fish and I was rebaiting even at one or two in the morning I was putting out seven or eight spawns and this seems to work really well and I just think that it just keeps bringing the fish back into the swim and the funny thing was I did run out of bait that trip about three or four in the morning and as soon as I ran out of bait and I didn't put any more bait in that was it I didn't have any more takes so what I'm planning to do this, this, this 24 hour session is maybe every five or six hours to put another handful of spoms out there and just see if it is that that's bringing the fish in. Or maybe that the fish are coming along, cleaning you out as well, you know. So just by keeping the bait topped up in the swim, even in these temperatures, um, hopefully that'll put a carp on the bank. Well, it's been a beautiful day at the, the chase today. It's been absolutely sunny here. The temperature must have got up to about, I don't know, 10 degrees, but in the sun it felt a lot warmer. But it looks like tonight we're in for a really cold night. So I reckon it's gonna drop down to about minus two tonight, minus three even. Hopefully the lake don't freeze. Uh, it's been a bit quiet on the fishing front. We had no liners or I haven't seen a single fish since I've been here. Um, birds have been diving on me again all day. I was just wondering, there's a couple out there just now diving, so maybe there's still a bit of bait out there. Um, hopefully, during the night, the fish will move in on us. But speaking to the lads further down the bank, it's been quiet all along. No one's seen a fish, so maybe this cold snap has, um, has put them down a bit. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully, in the night, we get some action. 
I was going to put a few spawns out just on dark uh, because the birds have been hammering me and I do know these fish in here, there's a lot of fish in here and if they do come across you, you do get that, you know, you can go through quite a lot of bait. So I might just put out three or four spawns once that sun goes down because at the minute that sun's right in my eyes, I won't have a clue. I can't see my spot, just about see the odd ripple when a coot goes down. So we're looking forward to a, a quite a cold night tonight and uh, just see what happens. Hopefully we get a fish. We had three takes in the night, all under the ice. I could uh, see the ice sort of forming during the night. Um, I, each time I woke up and looked out, there was more ice. And um, I ended up with three takes. This one here, I just had to play from under the ice. I won't be able to get my rod back on the spot. The lovely mirror, it really did fight. Uh, we, it just, I don't know, it must have been a good 15 minutes. 20 minutes it was just pulling and pulling and pulling so I'm really happy with this they're quite rare in here as well the mirrors mostly common so worked out perfect the bait uh, caught this over a load of crumb a uh, load of chopped baits pellet spotted up and a little yellow tuna and garlic pop-up this one was on little dark common come last night during the middle of the night caught down to the left um, up against a um, sort of sunken tree down to my left I flicked a bait down there just after dark and middle of the night it rattled off tiny little common but a beautiful condition so this was you know my first carp of the year of 2022 and uh, from the chase back lake a lake that I fished nearly all my life so I was well happy with it. Small fish, but absolute stunner. So yeah, we had quite a, um, a good night really, considering the lake froze over during the night. Um, as the night went on, I kept waking up and I could see the ice forming across the lake. And, uh, but we managed three, hooking three carp during the night. So, which was quite surprising really, considering the conditions, it was absolutely freezing. Um, two of them come on a rod down to the left in close. Well, I didn't put a rod there until late and one of them come off the baited area the, where I put all the, all the crumb and the pellet and the boiler yesterday. Um, the rig that I used was the multi-rig, one of my favourite rigs, I've caught so many big carp, very very simple, um, a lot of guys have seen me tie it before, I really can't tie it today, my hands are absolutely freezing, I can't feel them at all, I've got a, a hot cup of bovril here just to try and bring some life into them. But it was just a basic multi-rig, a uh, little bit of putty, just lifted off the bottom so it's not lifted too far, so it wasn't like a, a really high pop-up. And Funny enough, one of my mates called me just after dark last night and he said, tell, he said, 
this lake doesn't respond to pop-ups. Even though last time I was here, I'd done really well fishing with pop-ups. Um, he said, oh, you need wafters. Anyway, so I had three bites last night on pop-ups, so you know you can get a bite on a pop-up. But again, the multi-rig is so simple to use. It really does sit nice, and it doesn't sit too far off the bottom. So it's a tuna and garlic, yellow pop-up, uh, the mirror come on, the other two bites come on, washed out pink nutcracker. Um, just using a nice soft bit of coated braid, really soft coated braid, and a size six hook. So, and I'm just screwing the, the bait, uh, the screw into the bait. So that was the rig um, that done the business, probably about, what, seven or eight inches long, seven inches long, um, fished on a, a fixed lead with a drop off lead. Well, we've come to the end now of our 24 hours on the Chase Back Lake. Um, it's been quite, yeah, it's, it's been productive really. I, you know, I expected more because the last time I was here, I'd done really well, fishing over quite a lot of bait. But the conditions this time have been totally different. Uh, last time I was here, I was seeing fish show. Um, even though it was January as well, the fish were showing. Uh, it was a lot milder um, and the fish were having it. This time, it's been really high pressure, it's been freezing cold, it was minus four this morning. Uh, the lake has froze over completely, apart from the little corner where I'm fishing at the moment. But during the night, I had three bites, so can't complain with that. Um, all good. Um, it's not going to be long before we're going to do another video, but the next time it will, you'll, you'll be coming to the lake where I'm going to be doing my campaign and going to be doing my proper fishing this year. So I, I do look forward to that. Uh, we'll probably wait a month or so for things to start warming up. In the meantime, I might come and have another night on this back lake at the Chase, because I do like it over here. I've fished over here since I was probably 11 years of age. So I've seen this place mature through the years, and uh, it's just nice to come back. And it isn't too far from where I live as well. And, and the people who run it are good people. It's a really nice place and a great winter water, as you can see. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and I will see you guys soon.